on the line right now. He was just named, uh, uh, Forbes each year names 30 under 30. So they take 30 people that they feel will be influential. Keep an eye on these people. Uh, they're all under the age of 30 years uh, old, uh, all under 30. And Svante Myrick is the mayor of Ithaca. He was the youngest mayor ever in Ithaca. You'll recall back a while ago we had him on the radio talking about Ithaca's anti-heroin plan where they have a supervised injection facility. A lot of people complain about it, but look at the uh, the overdose problem we have going on in the country right now, and this is in uh, to combat that. On the line right now is Fonte Myrick. Good morning, Mayor. Thanks for coming on. Good morning, sir. Thank you so much for having me. I, so, I really appreciate it. I, I do want to ask you, before we get into any of the, the Forbes stuff, um, so uh, controversial, this anti-heroin plan. I mean, you're allowing... People to come in and use clean needles, right? Is what the the plan is. Yeah, so we have a we have a syringe exchange, and we'd like to take it one step further. You know, they pioneered about twenty years ago in Switzerland. They created this idea of supervised injection, which mm-hmm. says, you know, if we know that people are using heroin, and we know those of us who live in upstate New York, and really, honestly, all of the country right now, right, know that people are overdosing in gas station bathrooms, in their homes, and back alleys. Why don't we ask them to come inside? will supervise their use. And what they found in Switzerland, you know, they actually started this out just thinking that they would stop people from overdosing and, and save their lives, even if they continued to use heroin. Mm-hmm. But they found there and in Germany and Austria and now Canada and anywhere it's been tried, what happens is more people stop using heroin because they walk into a place full of nurses and people who care about their health. They're 35% more likely to kick their addiction and to finally get clean. So... That's what we want to do, and we're lobbying the state government to allow us to do it uh, this year. Uh, listen, I, 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 p- critics will say, well, you're, you're actually enabling these people. But right. uh, uh, the problem with heroin that we're finding is if you can't get it, you're going to get something. That's and, right. It, it, it doesn't yeah. take enabling. If people needed to be enabled to do her, you know, yeah. that's the thing. Is they do it in the most dangerous circumstances. They right, do it right. when they know they're going to overdose. They do it... I mean, this drug is beyond anything we've ever seen before. So using the same old tactics just isn't going to work. Yeah, I wanted to ask you about that. There's been so many overdoses lately. This fentanyl is mixed with the heroin, Mm, and it's really killing people, literally killing people. So how do you manage that at at, at these facilities that you're talking about where people are coming in with drugs that are laced with deadly uh, chemicals and things that, that will kill them. Do they bring their own, or you don't obviously don't provide them heroin, right? No, they bring their own. Um, but what they found in Canada, I mean, this is, the, this is the madness of this addiction, Yeah, is that when we put out, we find when we put out press releases saying, you know, there's fentanyl-laced heroin out there, it's especially strong, and it, and it will kill you. We found that the people who are suffering from addiction go out and chase that heroin. They yeah, say, oh, we're good, especially str- Right? So this is not rational behavior we're talking about. But what they found, especially in Canada, you know, they've done this for 14 years, and they've had 2 million people use uh, there, and even though they've, they've used with fentanyl-based heroin from time to time, they've had zero overdose deaths. Zero. And here in our region, this year alone, we've had dozens. So it's... Yeah. Um, it's uh, you know, it 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 does sound crazy, and I've been called crazy and worse <laughs> this past year. But uh, but I I can't defend the status quo anymore. I can't look at these families and tell them we're doing everything we can. Yeah, yeah. And I got to say, you're in a uh, look at where we are right now. Um, this is an epidemic in communities all across the country. So uh, I wonder, are you having more success when it comes to preventing uh, overdoses in in the we- Ithaca area? <laughs> We are a bit, and, and we're lucky because we have our syringe exchange program already. Yeah. So not only are we uh, having fewer overdoses than the counties that surround us, but we're having fewer uh, uh, HIV and hepatitis rates pop up. You know, right. I, I don't know if you know that this has been for hospitals, especially uh, a um, a parallel epidemic that's risen with overdoses is the hepatitis rates have spiked because people are using uh, dirty needles yeah, or yeah. sharing needles. Yeah. So. Oh, um, we are having a bit better success, but but we're still losing too many people. Yep. I got a heart wrenching letter yesterday from a from a father um, who was writing me to tell us to to keep it up because he didn't want to open the Ithaca Journal and, and read his daughter's obituary. 
Wow. And he was just, every day he was terrified he would flip open that page and find it. Now we know this has no boundaries. It's rich, it's poor, it's uh, it's families that are established and those that aren't. Um, yeah. It's yeah. everybody. There's no, there is no, um, uh, there, there's no boundary whatsoever on, on who this affects. Andrew. So, so ideally for the facility, um, I don't really know how big the problem is in Ithaca. I'm, I'm assuming it's just as bad as everywhere else. You notice even small cities like our city here in Utica has a problem with it. What is your vision? Is it specifically just for the people in the Ithaca area, or would you you know, kind of try and encourage people to travel to Ithaca to, to be at this facility? Yeah, what the studies have found, it's a good question. What the studies have found is that it, it actually only pulls people from about a 16-block radius. Really? So anything, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's a very localized. Because for most people who are using, it's already a bit of a hurdle to convince them to walk into, <laughs> you know, Vancouver. They talked about how for the first two or three years, people were convinced it was a trap. Right. That, okay. that they weren't going to go in because they thought the police were trying to lure mm-hmm. them in. Yeah. Uh, so what they've done there and in other places is built several of them. Uh, um, in Switzerland, a small country, 8 million people, they've got 24 different facilities. So, wow. Okay. And, and when I say facilities, these are just single rooms. You yeah. know, it's, honestly, it's just a room where... It's supervised. Uh, yeah. yeah, you've got yeah. 12 yeah. seats in a, in a room, and you can sit down, and there's a nurse, and, and if you overdose, they revive you. And after you use, we, which in moments... Frankly, when people who are addicted are most open to intervention is after when they're not uh, feeling the pull of the drug they've just used. Then the nurse can talk to you and say, hey, how are you doing? Yep. Have you thought any more about treatment? These are your options, and, and you know, keep right, coming least, in so we can keep you safe. So I was, uh, there's a trust factor there, and uh, that's got to be big. All right, I want to talk about um, the fact that you – something far more positive. You were named to, the, uh, to this Forbes list, 30 under 30. Uh, that's a great honor. Oh, thank you. Yes, it was uh, it was a nice surprise. Uh, and uh, you know, I, I think I first saw you on Meet the Press. I was very surprised to oh, see. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah, uh, this young kid on uh, on Meet the Press. That was very cool. I think we might have spoken after that. Uh, but um, so I, I do want to ask you. So um, you know, Forbes is saying you're uh, you're pretty influential. You're one to watch. You're a Democrat. Um, uh, what in the hell are you thinking right now about a? <laughs> What's going on in America, and B, what's going on in New York State? Uh, this is just yeah. crazy. Yeah. It's a tough, you know, it's a tough time, especially for people of my age who are um, Democrats and Republicans who are demoralized about politics. They don't, they don't see um, their elected officials at the, at the national or the state level looking out for them. And I, I just hope that I can convince people especially young people. You know, I'm going to be, they put me in the 30 under 30 just in time. I'm going to be 30 myself in March. So I'm now talking to a generation of kids, 18 and 19-year-olds, and trying to convince them that uh, the only way to improve our politics is to get more young people involved. You know, and to say that they don't vote or that they don't want to run for office because politics is corrupt, it's like saying that you don't want to plant any trees because the air is too dirty. You know, the, the right, acting, right. Acting the trees cleans the air. Hmm. And right. only engagement is going to get us better outcomes than, than we've been seeing. And, and I'm, I'm deeply pessimistic about the incoming presidential administration, but uh, uh, I would love to be proven wrong. Uh, meet the under 30, um, the 30 under 30 who will be shaping law and policy in Trump's America. That is the headline. Um, so... I, I got to tell you, I, I do wonder, and I'd like you to talk about. I do wonder, you know, we're talking right now about uh, about Obamacare, and they're going to come in, and the, the they're 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 saying that they're going to they're going to repeal it. The problem is uh, repeal and replace. They're going to need the Democrats to replace, by the way. But don't be surprised, based on a few things that I've been been reading, a few tweets that I've been reading. Don't be surprised if the one person that prevents Obamacare from being repealed right off the bat mm-hmm. is president donald trump don't be surprised yeah. do you do you agree with that yeah i agree completely i think his his instincts i mean i've always thought that he was a man who could read a crowd and would say whatever got the largest response and yes, uh yeah. once he started holding big rallies he realized that he said we'll repeal obamacare and he got a big cheer he said okay i'll keep saying that but you could see in his heart of hearts 
he never quite meant it. If you go back to the summer of 2015, he talks about why uh, Obamacare might not be enough because he thinks socialized medicine in Canada and in Europe have actually had yeah. a positive effect on businesses there. So it's not, I don't think his, his heart has ever been in the appeal of this, and I think he reads the writing on the wall, which is that as unpopular as Obamacare is, when you take it away and premiums continue to rise, the yeah. premiums were rising before Obamacare, and they're going to rise if you repeal it, you will be blamed for those rising premiums, and the 11 or 12 million people who had insurance that you now took away, yeah. they'll blame you as well. So I think he sees that it's a political loser, even if the folks in Congress can't see it. Uh, listen, you say read the writing on the wall. It's his Twitter wall uh, that you read the writing on. <laughs> it is latest. That just in the last few days, he's saying, I'm not sure... I'm not yeah. sure right now that repealing without a solution here is going to be the, the, the answer. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens. I'm optimistic as well. And uh, uh, let's, uh, let's hope for the country that this is a, a great four years. Uh, Mayor Svante Myrick in Ithaca, um, name to the Forbes list. Uh, keep an eye on this guy. Svante, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you. I really appreciate it. We'll uh, talk again. Thanks. Uh, he is, uh, he's something um, there in, uh, in Ithaca. Uh, making his way up the ladder. We'll see what happens.